Hello everyone, I am Miss DeVries and I am so excited to be reading our final chapter of Wish by Barbara O'Connor with you all today. This book has been lovely so far, with a story of a girl moving to a new town, making new friends, and owning a new dog while getting to know a new family. At first she didn't love where she lived but she's starting to really realize that she cares about everyone who's there. Let's keep reading to see what happens next, to see if Charlie's wish comes true. Chapter 31. When I got back, Gus was home from work, sitting in a lawn chair, dunking turnip greens in a bucket of water. Hey there, Butterbean, he called out when he saw me. Wishbone slurped up some of that sandy turnip green water with me, and Gus laughed. Bertha's cat named Lula May sauntered over and rubbed her head against Wishbone's leg. He gave me a mournful look, but he let her do it. Later, while Bertha put turnip greens and cornbread and tuna casserole on the table, she told me we would talk about everything after supper. I didn't know what talk about everything meant. So I just said, okay. But inside, I felt scared. I pushed tuna casserole around on my plate and didn't say much, while Bertha told us about some friend of hers whose son ran off and joined the army. Honest to goodness, she said, the way she keeps crying and carrying on, you'd think he jumped off a cliff. After supper, I helped her clear the table, and then we went up to the porch to eat peaches with vanilla ice cream. I watched the lightning bugs twinkle down below and waited for us to talk about everything. Finally, Bertha started. So, Charlie, she said. I talked to social services today and told them I didn't think your situation at home has improved after all. I told them I thought maybe they'd made a mistake. You did? I did. Then she told me how they agreed to check on things. She repeated some of those social services kind of words like reevaluate and stable environment. They promised they would get back to me in a few days, Bertha said. Well, let me tell you, those few days felt like a few years to me. Worry followed me every minute, making my insides flop around and my heart beat like crazy. Howard kept saying, trust me, you're not going back to Raleigh. But when I asked him how he knew that, he said, I can't tell you. Just trust me. I wanted to trust him more than anything, but that ball of worry in my stomach just wouldn't go away. And then, of course, laying in bed with Wishbone snoring beside me, I couldn't stop thinking about how wrong I'd been about everything here in Colby. How I hadn't seen all the good things Jackie saw right away. And then I found myself wanting to be more like Jackie again, and Howard too, both of them always seeing the good in things. I put my head on Wishbone's warm side and made a promise to myself right there in that little room of mine. No matter how things turned out, I was going to try to see the good in things, like Jackie and Howard. I knew I'd probably always have to say pineapple once in a while on account of Scrappy's temper that I have. But who knows, if I try hard enough, maybe someday somebody might even call me good-hearted. Those few days dragged on and every little thing I looked at nearly turned me into a crying baby, thinking I might be leaving. Bertha stirring grits by the stove with a cat at her feet. Gus out in the garden in his greasy baseball cap, picking nasty green worms off the tomato plants. Even the shed and the porch and the lawn chairs and the canning jars lined up on that shelf in my room made me sad. I tried to stay busy at Howard's, but then being at the Odoms liked to broke my heart. That ratty old couch on the porch, the yard full of bicycles and balls and dirty sneakers, and, of course, Howard, studying his fort plans like he was building a castle, then heading out to the edge of the yard with that up-down walk of his. Finally, after a few days, the kitchen phone rang, 
while me and Bertha were out on the porch eating egg salad sandwiches for lunch. She answered it and talked for a while. And when she came back out, the look on her face told me something good was about to happen. How would you like to stay here with me and Gus, Charlie? She said. My heart nearly leaped right out of my chest. Stay, I said. Bertha nodded. Stay. For how long? Then Bertha said almost the exact same words that Jackie had said on her last night in my room. About how Scrappy was going to keep on being Scrappy and Mama was going to keep on being Mama. And then she told me as long as she had a breath in her body, she was going to make things right for me. I wanted to jump up and down and pump my fist and let out a cheer that would echo across the valley below us. I wanted to spread my arms like wings and fly right off that porch and out over the treetops and up into the clouds. I wanted to dance with Wishbone and then race down to Howard's to tell him the news. But what I did first was hug Bertha. Yes, ma'am, I said. I would like to stay with you and Gus. I hugged her one more time and added, I would like that a lot. Bertha looked at me all teary-eyed and said, Guess what I'm doing first thing tomorrow? What? I'm getting every single one of those dang canning jars out of your room. We laughed, and I asked if I could go tell Howard the news. So me and Wishbone raced down to the Odoms and up the porch steps. I banged on the screen door, hollering, Guess what, y'all? I didn't even wait for anybody to come to the door. I burst right into their living room, which I know was not a very nice thing to do, but I couldn't stop myself. Howard jumped up from the couch, and Mrs. Odom came running in from the kitchen, and I said, I'm staying here. I'm not going back to Raleigh. Mrs. Odom hugged me and told me that was the best news ever. But Howard just said, Told ya. Then he gave Wishbone half a vanilla wafer and said, I knew you were staying here. But how'd you know, I asked. Because that was the other part of my wish, he said, that day at the creek. I wished that you would be my friend and stay here in Colby. You did? He nodded. Yep. And since the part about being my friend came true, I knew the other part would too but I couldn't tell you because of that rule. You know, that you can't tell your wish to anybody or it won't come true. Well, didn't that just beat all? Howard making a wish like that. On my way home, I thought about how I'd made my wish so many times and it hadn't come true. And there was Howard, getting his wish on the very first try. Still, my heart felt light as a feather as I turned up the gravel driveway toward Gus and Bertha's. That night after supper, we sat out on the porch and ate blackberry cobbler and listened to Bertha's stories. And then, she said, one time we ran out of gas in the middle of nowhere with three cats in the car. Remember that, Gus? He nodded and said, yep. Then Bertha let out a big contented sigh and said, I never in my wildest dreams would have thought we'd have a family like this. Would you, Gus? A family like this? Is that what she'd said? She had said that. A family. A real family. A family that cared about me and called me Butterbean and was going to take the canning jars out of my room first thing tomorrow. A family that wasn't broken. A family that I'd been wishing for all those times. I couldn't hardly wait till Sunday when I could find my flower in the Garden of Blessings and write my family on it. Suddenly, Bertha called out, Star! First star! Everybody make a wish! I looked up at that star twinkling over the mountains, but instead of wishing... I just closed my eyes and breathed in the piney air. My wish had finally come true. And that is the end of The Wish by Barbara O'Connor. So we learn that Charlie's wish all along was to have a family that loved her. 
And at the end of this story, she finally found that in Bertha and Gus. Thank you for joining me for each of these chapters of this wonderful book. And I hope to see you next time I do a read aloud with Mr. Vries. Thank you.